Hi, I'm Frank and welcome to my wood turning channel. This week I'm going to try to turn a rectangular piece. Basically it'll be like a rectangular bowl. And this is a piece of mystery wood that I got from my friend Peter at Woodchuckers. It's not walnut and I'm not sure what it is. It looks like some kind of roasted wood. Anyway, we'll see what it turns out like and then uh, once I show him, he'll have to tell me what kind of wood it is. After squaring up the edges, I'm just going to now mark the center. I've drilled a 3 8 inch hole because I'm going to use the screw chuck as you can see here. I just find it's the handiest way to turn something like, like one of these thin plates or thin bowls. I'm going to use a mortise uh, dovetail joint for the chuck on this particular piece. That way I don't take away much material and I can retain the full thickness of the piece. And you can see I've got the tailstock up for support, which is always a good thing. I'm going to start with just pull cuts here and just start shaving the, uh, the material off and start to develop the profile and just see how the, the chip out is at the corners. Here I'm just showing you those same pull cuts just from a different angle. So you can see I have the handle of the tool down quite far and I'm rubbing the bevel. I am getting a little bit of tear out at the corners so I can only go so far with this pull cut and then I'm going to have to uh, go to push cuts. Now that it's balanced, I've taken the uh, tailstock away and I'm just starting to develop the profile here on the underneath part for the, uh, for the dovetail joint. And that'll fit nicely into my chuck, but I'm going to check it just to make sure it just fits properly. And now I'm going to just do a push cut, taking off as little material as I can to try to get a really smooth finish so I don't have a lot of uh, lines and dents and things. And of course, trying to minimize tear out so I don't have to do a lot of sanding as well. I will finish off with this negative rake scraper just in areas where there's a few little lines and things. Again, this is to minimize the amount of sanding I have to do to blend that in. So I'm using it flat on the tool rest because it's an interrupted cut and that's the best way I've found to get the outer edges.
with the bottom of the bowl totally finished now I'm just going to turn it around and uh, remove the screw chuck and then put it into the dovetail chucks and work on the inside of the bowl or the top surface. Again, I brought the tailstock up for additional support, and I'm just going to use a series of push cuts here to uh, achieve my desired thickness. And what I want, what I'm looking for, is a nice even thickness all the way through. This is now a final cut in that first two or three inches. And when I have that the way I like it, I uh, won't go back to that surface again. So the wall thickness wasn't totally consistent as I'd like. It's a little bit thicker as I go in. So I'm gonna take another cut just to go in a little deeper as I go in further and really try to get that wall thickness even all the way along. Your eye will really notice it if it's not consistent all the way along there. Now I'm just hogging out a bit more material to remove some of that internal mass. So what I've been doing is using a roughing gouge and then a finishing gouge. My roughing gouge is 55 degree bevel and my finishing gouge is 45 degree bevel. So I just go in a series of steps. First I get close to the finish surface with the roughing gouge and then I'll pick up my sharper uh, steeper angled finishing gouge and just make that final cut. I'm getting a pretty even surface along here, so that's good. I'll just continue on using the same approach, hogging out the middle and then coming across and uh, doing my final cuts. If you're enjoying the video, please hit the like button and uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And that way you can get notification of uh, any of my new videos coming out. This is a really delicate cut for my final cut. I'm just skimming over the surface trying to get the best surface finish I can. There's always going to be a few lines on the surface you have to deal with. So here I'm just sharpening up my negative rake scraper. And sharpening this way it puts the burr on the top. And then the burr is what's going to use to cut off all the little imperfections in the surface. And here you can see I'm, uh, I'm just starting to uh, flatten off some of those surfaces.
it's always good to use calipers to measure your uh, your thickness as you go. These are these Andre Martel calipers available from Andre Martel in Quebec. They're just fantastic. And I think you can get them from Craft Supplies in the US or Packard or there's a there's a US dealer for them somewhere down there. I still have a few high spots in the transition from where it's it's totally round to where I'm starting to get an interrupted cut. Oops, I guess you don't put your pencil in when it's an interrupted cut. <laughs> I guess that was a blooper. No, this is the proper way to do it. Just put your pencil there and hold it and go back and forth and make your line. I find the lines just make it easier to know exactly where to use the negative rake scraper to take off the little high spots. The nice thing about my robust lathe is that with the 24 inch swing the bed is down really low and that way I can have a seat and just relax and make the cut. And here's the same thing just from a different angle. To do the final cuts along the bottom surface where the grain is very, very parallel, I'm just going to use this bottoming bowl gouge. I find it gives you the, uh, the best surface, but it is a bit tricky to use. And in fact, I was having a bit of trouble here just picking up the, uh, picking up the wood and, and getting the cut I wanted to. But eventually I got a nice surface across there with uh, no tear out and uh, which minimizes and simplifies the sanding process. With this type of piece you can only sand so much of it with the piece rotating then you I basically lock it in my lathe and sand all of the corners by hand. To flatten the sides I use various techniques. Sometimes I use a belt sander or I'll take it over to my stationary sander. But in this case the sides were pretty good so I just used a hand, hand sander here with a couple of grits and that's all it really needed. Well the piece turned out pretty nice. Nice even thickness. And I figured out what the wood is. I'm sure it's roasted ambrosia maple. Now even though the piece is very nice the way it is, I thought I would decorate it a little bit uh, by burning in a tree image. So here I'm using my py pyrography pen and uh, just burning in an image. This is something I do on some of my bowls. Just uh, makes it a little, a little more interesting than just a plain bowl. And I'm just going to use my standard uh, finish that I use for the majority of my bowls. This is a general salad bowl finish and you can see I wipe it on and then I wipe it off. Stay tuned for some still pictures coming up and uh, hopefully you've enjoyed the video.